Uh, hi, today is a very special day for Japanese people. It's the 7th of January, uh, the holiday of the seven spring herbs. On this day, uh, Japanese people gather or buy seven spring herbs and make a kind of gruel, kind of porridge with, with them and with rice. It's a very simple dish which is served at the end of the New Year period kind of purifying and very few people outside Japan know about it. I don't know Japanese so I'm not sure if I read it correctly but I suppose you can you read it as Nanakusa no Sekku this this holiday and the dish the the actual herbs are called Haru no Nanakusa and um, the the gruel is called Nanakusa Gayu and um, customarily seven Herbs are eaten because seven is a special number in Japan, like the Chinese like eight, a bagua, for example. In Japan, they, they prefer seven um, and they use seven also in other combinations on, on other holidays. So the seven herbs are seri, which is Asian drop word, and ante javanica, which is quite a common wild vegetables, uh, vegetable growing in wet places in East Asia. Don't don't um, uh, don't uh, confuse it with the drop word, which is poisonous, and nante crocata, which grows in in Western Europe. So this one is edible, at least after cooking. Then nazuna, shepherd's purse, capsella bursa pastoris, gogjo, which is jersey cudweed, gnafalium affine, hakobera, which is common chickweed, stellaria media. Hotokenosa, henbit dead nettle, Lamium amplexicaule, Suzuna, um, which is field mustard, Brassica campestris, subspecies Rapa, now called Kabu, and Suzushiro, now called um, Daikon, which is radish, a kind of radish, Raphanus sativus. In some areas, people might. Um, use a different combination in some areas, for example, they use mugwort as one of the of the herbs. Um, I knew about this holiday for many years, but I found out more uh, from a fantastic book by Winifred Bird, published uh, last year, um, actually two years ago, 2021, by Stonebridge Press in Berkeley. Um, the title of the book is Eating Wild Japan, and the author lived in, in Japan for a few years, and she in a very fantastic way describes um, various Japanese wild foraged dishes. It's a masterpiece, this book. So this is um, the back cover from my blog from this Eating Wild Japan. So on the morning of um, January the 7th or on the eve of, of January the 6th, um, a spoon for uh, eating rice and a wooden mortar are placed on a chopping board indicating an auspicious direction and a song with the words before the birds from the continent come to Japan we are going to collect nanakusa is sung and the herbs are chopped while chanting and even this is a very common um, uh, meal on that day and even there are some uh, meals organized, like giving away to older people publicly. So it's a, it's, a, it's a big, big thing in Japan. And one day, I hope I can be in Japan on the 7th of January. And that's one of my unfulfilled life um, dreams. Actually, Shepherd's Purse is one of the most widely collected wild vegetables in the world. It can be also grown from seeds and it's cultivated in China. It's very popular in Shanghai, where you can easily buy Jitsai um, um, ho Houdun dumplings. There's also a beautiful legend about Shepherd's Purse, which actually brought me to, to China the first time in 2005. I was always fascinated by this story, and um, I was always fascinated by, by Chinese characters. I started learning them when I was three. And of course, I didn't have uh, many resources, so I didn't, you know, I was just copying things from from Chinese products. 
And um, and then I met a Chinese student when I was living in, in Norwich in uh, 2002. He told me some Chinese and then that's how I eventually went to, to China in, in 2005. And um, uh, the, the story, there is a story about Shepherd's Purse in China near Xi'an, which is the ancient capital of China from the Tang Dynasty. Um, I read this story in a book called uh, Encounters with Chinese Hermits, Hermits by Bill Porter. So it's a legend about the daughter of a prime minister from this dynasty called, she was called Wang Bao Chuan. He, uh, the, the father wanted to marry her to a suitable man, but she kept refusing to all candidates. So eventually her father made all the men who wanted to ask for her grand, for her hand um, to, um, to wait uh, at, the, at the feet of Great Goose Pagoda. And she had to climb the pagoda and threw a ball, silk, a ball of silk from it. Um, and the man who would catch it, he would become her fiancé. And she threw it into a poor traveller, uh, Bing Kuei, uh, who was standing in the crowd. And um, the father didn't respect the choice and the young couple had to leave the palace. Um, they were forced to settle in an empty cave in a less cliff that was formerly used for making pots. And one of the prime minister's son-in-law law, organized a trap and Ping Wei was captured and imprisoned by the enemy. In spite of receiving the news of her husband's death, uh, Bao Chuan faithfully waited for his return. Ping Kuei um, came back 18 years later to find her collecting shepherd's purse. She had been eating it all the time throughout those long 18 years. Now the place is a small Taoist temple and inside there's a wax figure cabinet which depicts the story and I was happy to visit it in September 2005. And um, um, so, so also, um, I came across eating shepherd's purse, of course, in different places. Uh, for example, in Croatia, um, where they also have a song. Not, it's not a song. Sorry, it's a it's a saying devoted to this species. I recorded this saying in the area of Zadar in in Dalmatia, in Croatian Dalmatia. Um, it, it is known only in two villages, in Pristek and in Dobra Voda, where you say, Surely an baba parala i zetu se nadala, doji zete doveče, zaklat čemo goveče, ako dožeš popodne, biti ti šurliana i čorbe. Um, so um, it, it actually is translated, an old lady picked shepherd's purse hoping for her son-in-law. If, if you come, son, by the evening, we will prepare beef. If you come in the afternoon, there will be shepherd's purse and soup. And now let's look at um, the plants which I found today in Warsaw. It's a very mild winter. No, very often in Warsaw in, in January there is snow and frost and you cannot find any plants, but actually it's quite mild. Temperatures are usually around plus five, plus 10 this year. So a lot of plants are kind of reviving or they manage to um, carry on throughout autumn and winter with some leaves. So maybe actually I can find seven species of edible wild greens. Here a nice population of shepherd's purse, very important part of the seven spring herbs in Japan, even flowering now. I dug out one on uh, rosette with roots. Roots are also edible. Here in Poland no one minds digging up roots of weeds. I know that in Britain there is a law prohibiting digging up plants but not in many countries so I can legally take it out. Uh, here chickweed even flowers. One of the genera of seven spring herbs in Japan. Um, dead nettle? Although they use pink dead nettle and this is the the white one. 
and you hear purple dead nettle flowering. Violet, Viola dorata, also at the Belize, one of the mallow species. And the last uh, herb from the seven herbs today, dandelion, of course, is not in the uh, canon, but we don't have much choice, so I'll take a dandelion as well. A Hinopsis cactus in the middle of Warsaw and winter, I would never expect it. Just in 10 minutes I managed to gather these herbs. I'll clean them, wash them, um, boil, and then th when they are clean, free of parasite eggs, because it's a city collocation, uh, I'll mix it with rice and, and boil the traditional porridge for the seventh day of the year. Of course I will um, eat some seven spring herbs today um, as well. Not all of them are the same as Japanese ones, but uh, see the rest of the film to find out which of the traditional ones I actually found in Warsaw in Poland.